This area here is one of the areas that was rebuilt again after the earthquakes. It's called the Annex of Eustolios. I say that Eustolios was somebody like Onassis, somebody very wealthy, somebody very uh, important. Um, this area was rebuilt by him. He gave the money to rebuild it. Previously, before the earthquake, it was a luxurious private villa belonging to his family. But with the reconstruction after the earthquake, it became a public, not a private building, a public building. So, baths in the Roman times. They always began with the cold bath. This is square shape, a simple geometrical mosaic. And there's a seat. But before entering the cold bath, they would sit here, wash their, wash their feet very well, there's a hole there, so they could change easily the water underneath the pipes, yes, the water pipes. So they wash their feet well before entering the cold bath. That's another cold bath, semi-circular, and underneath it, there's another uh, foot bath here. So what did they do? They had the cold bath, the warm, and then the hot. After they came back to the warm bath, and then they finish with the cold bath. They say start and finish with the cold water. It's very, very good for the blood circulation. When we see somebody, I mean the older generation, not the young ones, the old gen older generation, when they see a friend or family they didn't see for a long time, and you say, oh, hello, and, and uh, how are you? Are you well? Your health? How is everything? And they always reply, from worshipping the ancient gods to becoming Christians. It was a, a slow process, but putting is very important. So, if you're standing on that side, you can come down, we're going over there on that side. If you're on this side, come this way. It's for the Holy Trinity. The inscription here says, instead of With this kind of architecture, it was also received from the centre. Usually, in the villas, the best rooms were around the actual. So what did they do? They brought with these pipes the used water. you will know yourselves to put a date. If you see the circular one, it's older, semi-circular, it's Roman. Unemployed men. They didn't have any work, it was difficult to eat. So if they had a big body and they were strong, they could make an application to become a gladiator. And if they were chosen, uh, 
Um, then they got a roof over their head. <laughs> they got a roof over their head and good food. They were fed well. These gladiators, they belong to somebody. And that somebody paid a lot of money to train them and to feed them. It was not easy to say kill him. <coughs> it had to be a very bad wealthy Chinese have invested here because Paphos is small, it's very clean. Many weddings, many foreigners come here to have a wedding. Well, it's all connected with Aphrodite, isn't it? Completely different architectural style on the right. This is British colonial period. Columns there is a shaft burial, two kinds of burial. You can see the columns. 
They are with the Doric style. They preferred, and for the necropolis, they preferred the Doric style. Number three, triglyph, three little lines. You can see it very well on this side because it's new. Nothing has been redone to show you clearly because the original is not very visible. You can hardly see it, yes? We know that originally the walls were painted with a very simple uh, geometrical design in uh, brown, orange, red color. Um, sometimes they painted a door <laughs> or a window just to make it look more like a house, yes? All the tombs have a dromos. Dromos in modern Greek means road that we drive on. Ancient the Dromos was a corridor with the steps. For this tomb, it's just here. The corridor with the steps leading into the main chamber. To be rushed. It's a meal. You must have a lot of time to have this meal with a glass. Uh... If you're not coming with me, then you will have time for meze. But it's a fishing harbor, so here is better to have fish meze, not. Uh... And they serve the octopus and the squid and different kinds of fish, grilled, fried, 